Well, obviously, this is a new one. This is a spec aluminum flywheel. Yeah, aluminum, not steel. This weighs around 10 to 12 pounds compared to the stock one that weighs 26. So this should spin a lot faster. So, which means more horsepower to the wheels. And then I'm gonna have the aluminum drive shaft. So everything should work hand in hand. But yeah, spec aluminum flywheel. Now this one right here, this is a Cobra uh, aluminum flywheel. So this came stock on the 2003 and 2004 Cobras. This is what I had in my car um, with the two valve. I was gonna reuse it, but uh, me and my dad were looking at it and talking it over and we were like, nah, let's go ahead and get a new one just cause this has been resurfaced I think like twice. So I'm not sure if it would be able to get resurfaced again. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna buy a new one. I don't wanna risk it. It could get pretty sketchy whenever it comes to flywheels. If you don't put it back correctly or if it's not good anymore. Like there's been cases where like the flywheel will cut through the, the freaking bottom of the car and into the inside the cabin. So yeah, I was like, nah, I'm just gonna buy a new one. But uh, yeah, we're, just, we're gonna see if we could, I don't know, somehow use this later, revive it, I don't know, but yeah. I'm not gonna be using that anymore on my car. So, yep, gonna put this one on. So the goal for today is going to be to put the flywheel, then the clutch with the pressure plate, and then hook up my T56 transmission to this. So that's gonna be the goal for today. Uh, hooking up the tranny to the motor, which means, you know, putting the flywheel, the bolts, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on putting the flywheel on and then the clutch and then the transmission. Hopefully tomorrow we can have this thing sitting in the car. Of course, we need to put some Loctite on there. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna put it on the bolt before I put up the flywheel. Pilot bearing. But I'm at that. I got to the clutch flywheel. And the pressure plate is on, and now we're gonna try and put the trans on. All right, so just in case you guys are wondering, well, first we, we have to change the throttle bearing. So in order to get this out, we have to take off the fork. So if you guys don't know how to take off the fork, you literally just pull on this this way, and then it'll come out. So I'm just gonna pull on it, watch. Okay, so now it's out. It's out of the socket from there. And now, all you're gonna do is just slide this out. See, just like that. 
There you go. And then you're just gonna take it up. And then if you guys don't know how to take this off, just kinda slide it out, scoop it out. There you go. That's how you take off a throw bearing. headers are finally on and it wasn't as easy as I thought uh, I didn't film putting them on just because it would have been super boring and like there was a lot of putting on taking it off putting on taking it off screwing the nut taking it off you know so like it's just a bunch of a lot of film that have, would have been like boring I think so yeah they're on and let me explain what I did or what we decided to do this is the passenger side and these are BBK headers, ceramic uh, BBK headers, and it did come with some hardware. So, if you look right there, that is one of the one of the bolts that it came with. So that's pretty much what they look like. And then the regular, the regular ones that were on here, uh, I think I talked about in another video. I, I said that I was going to use the stock studs, and I even grinded the the studs so they wouldn't hit the the header. But um, I decided to put the ones that came with the BBK headers just because there's more clearance here if you can see so that gives me a chance to put a socket here on some of them versus having the stud reach all the way almost touching the header even though I grinded it and I wouldn't have any space to put a socket if that makes sense. In a nutshell these have more clearance and are easier to take on and take off and the only reason I left this one here was just because I don't know, I don't want to change it, so I just left this one here. Um, so yeah, there's only one stud and it's at the very top. The rest are the bolts that came with the headers. And then on this side, on this side, uh, the only studs that I left were this one right here, this one, and this one right here. Basically, the only, one, the only ones that have studs is where the header has an open slit so where it slides in like that see right there so pretty much the ones with the open ends have studs on the driver side and then everything else is just the BBK bolts and it worked out good there's no clearing issues nothing's hitting and the same for the other side the, like I said this side it's the where it has the slits I use the studs on the other side it's pretty much all the BBK bolts but yeah they're finally on and it's finally coming together it's starting to look complete and nice uh, last thing left to do is to take the shift knob off that way uh, when we roll this under here we don't have this hit the bottom of the car so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take that off before me and my dad try and put this finally back in the car quick uh, I decided to not put the engine in just yet 
because um, I'm trying to connect the wiring harness so that we don't have trouble so that we don't have trouble plugging it in once it's in the car so this is this is the engine harness and I'm just slowly uh, connecting each connector at a time so first we're gonna put the engine harness and then once that's on we'll slide it under the car and I think I already figured it I think I already figured out how it goes because I already got like four connectors over here so everything should just line up and connect We're gonna, we chained up the engine to the cherry picker. We're gonna pick up the engine a little bit so we can take that little cart off and then the engine is gonna just stay there with jack stands. So right now we're gonna pick the engine up a little bit and get the cart out of there. Alright, so in the process of trying to jack this up, we were looking at it and the alternator is going to hit the ABS right here. So now what we're going to do is uh, take the tension off, take the belt off, and take this off. And it should be able to clear space from the bracket and the ABS, it's a good amount. So the engine should be able to just go up when we jack it up. It's just that this is in the way right now, so we're going to take this off. All right, go, go, go. There you go. There you go. Hey, badass, dude, dale, dale, dale. Okay, keep going, keep going. A little bit more. Okay. Uh, hold on. Hey, hold on. Yeah, we got plenty of clearance over here now. All right. All right, so the motor is in. It's right now just being held by this uh, engine harness up here. So, there's nothing under, we're about to test fit the K-member and there's these two big jacks holding the car up. So we're just gonna test fit this and it should be good. It's a UPR K-member, but the motor's in and it actually fits pretty good. There's a good amount of clearance all around. So yeah, we're about to test fit the K-member. What's up? Alright guys, so real quick, uh, obviously the engine is under the car with the transmission, but we ran into like a slight hiccup, uh, slight, but it's kind of a major hiccup, but it's all good. Um, pretty much the bottom of the oil pan was hitting right on the K-member, and we couldn't pick up the K-member anymore because of the oil pan. So uh, I made a few phone calls, and looks like I'm going to need some spacers for my motor mounts. I'm using 4.6 motor mounts, which is totally fine from what I hear. Um, so all I need to do is get a, a 3 8 um, shim for the motor mounts. And since I was already ordering, I got some offset rack bushings for the steering rack and pinion. So that way it hangs just a little bit lower. And I also got some 12 inch uh, coilover springs for the front because right now I have 14s, they're too long, so I need the 12 inch springs. It'll all make sense once I show you guys on camera. So these are pretty much the spacers that I needed. You can see right here, it says shim plates and I already ordered it. I got the 3 8 and then I also got the, the offset rack bushings right here. So that way the rack and pinion hangs a little bit lower and it'll help with clearance issues, which there shouldn't be any. And then I went ahead and got these right here. 
these are just the uh, 12 inch coilover springs because I have I have 14 14 inch uh, coilover springs and they're just too long like I'm running out of thread on my strut so I'm gonna get these 12 inch springs and I should fix everything but yeah I went ahead and ordered it and just can't wait to get it so we can mount up the engine all right guys so let me explain what happened so I know you guys saw me ordering the parts, the shims, and the bushings for the rack and pinion, and then also, what was that order? Oh yeah, I ordered some springs. So we already put all the parts in the car, so let me go ahead and show you all the parts. I didn't film it just because I was trying to hurry up, honestly. Um, I was just trying to get it done, and I feel like this video is already going to be long enough. I'm not sure, but let me just show you all the parts, and the engine is actually sitting in the car, like, with no issues, no clearance issues, everything is good. So let me go ahead and show you everything we put on. So right here is the Viking Springs, you can see. So there's a the spring, I went from the 14 to the 12 inch ones. Went ahead and we put the rotors, the brakes, well not the calipers, but, and I know, I know these are ugly. I'm gonna change them, don't worry about it. Or clean them, but more than likely I'm gonna get new calipers, slotted and drilled rotors, so don't even worry about that. But, there she is just mocked up the intake's not on there completely right this coupler's too big actually so uh, I ordered a 45 degree angle one with the proper fitting so that's gonna be good and yeah I still need to put the fuel rails and everything there's nothing under here but the engine is in there all the brackets and everything fits fits pretty good I mean the clearance is good this looks like it's the type fit, but it's not it's good in the back, there's more room than you think. I don't know if you can see the floor, you can't, but there's more than enough room. This side, it's a little tight, but it works. Um, nothing, like I said, is, is hitting. Let's look under the car. Okay, so here it is the tubular UPR A arms, and this is a UPR. K member. Now this K member is not specifically for swaps, but it still works. So the when when I when we first sit, sat the engine on the car, it was hitting right here. The oil pan was sitting on this. So I called Power by the Hour, and the guys were like, "You're gonna need some shims." So that's exactly what I ordered, as you guys saw. The shims are in here, so basically in between the K-member and the motor mount. And these are my stock uh, 4.6 motor mounts, not the 5.0 motor mounts. Which is okay, I can use them. And these are new, so that's why I wanted to use them. And yeah, the shim is right here. It's a 3 8 shim. And it sits good. Now we have nothing hitting. Let's see, I'm going to try and angle this so you guys can see that nothing's hitting. See, it's clear, nothing's hitting. Well, that's exactly where it was hitting. And the headers fit good also. Right there, it's kind of close. Closer than I would like, but it's still good. And if you're wondering why there's a dent right there, that's because on my old setup, the two valve, the O2 sensor for the eBay headers was right there, so I just gave it a little massage right there so you could fit the O2 sensor. But anyways, uh, nothing's hitting and Nothing's hitting up there as you can see on the top tube of the header Nothing's hitting and let's go to the other side over here We got the Steering shaft right here fit right in between so that's good and This header is not hitting anything at all and Also, it's pretty clear up there. So nothing's hitting. Yeah, uh, it's sitting in there and so pretty much now I'm gonna buy a rack and pinion, a new rack and pinion, and then a couple of other things, but I'm done for today and I'll film all that stuff in the next video. Let me just get up here so you guys could look at the engine. Alright, so there she is. I know you guys kind of saw it already, but yeah, everything's good, man. And uh, the engine harness is there. As you can see, the injector plugs are not clicked in because I still need to put the fuel rail with the injectors and all that good stuff but for the most part everything's there except the fuel system 
and I still need to put the control pack to connect that to the mass airflow sensor, to my AC compressor, the alternator, but for the most part everything is looking good. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Uh, we're probably going to be putting on the rack and pinion and some other, some other stuff. It doesn't matter, there's a lot of stuff to do. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and just stay tuned for the whole builds. We're going to try and film everything and uh, just trying to do our best here and get it done as quickly as possible. But it's, it's good that we're doing it on our own. So thanks again. Make sure to like, uh, comment if you guys have any questions. I try to respond to everybody, almost everybody. And yeah, just try to share this video and all the other videos. But thanks again. It really means a lot, guys. Catch you guys later.